Have a great day. Is it going good? Wait. Oh, wait. And <laughs> we are about to roll. Yeah, we're now we're oh, okay. Now we're Hi, <laughs> Dr. Mark here for National Health. Hope you're having a great day. Um, this is going to be kind of a weird health shop for us because uh, what we had planned on, this is the fifth Monday of the month, we had planned on having a dinner with the docs. It's kind of a new program we're going to start. And that was, it was going to be actually having a dinner here with patients that wanted to come and ask questions and different things. So, but with the COVID stuff, we decided not to get involved with all that for right now. We'll do it again later for sure, probably pretty soon too. Um, because the COVID, the COVID narrative is starting to really fall apart. We're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about that at the end. Uh, but anyway, um, what we're going to do tonight then is just go through uh, some of the recipes and things. We've had patients as their uh, kids are getting back to school, ask about healthy, uh, healthy uh, snacks and things. And then just kind of some general healthy uh, foods and things. So we have quite a few recipes here at the office. And many of these we have tweaked ourselves. Uh, we get these off the internet, but if you try them, they don't taste very good. And so we've, uh, we've found some different ways of doing things. We have quite a, you know, a few snack things, some entrees and desserts and things like that. So I'm just going to go through a couple of these things. And uh, first off, I'm going to start with some foods that we use a lot in the office. Um, there's a lot of different, well, ketchup is one. Uh, there's, this is organic, unsweetened, but it's a really good one. You have to look for some of these foods because uh, but most of the ketchups are very high in, 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 in high fructose corn syrup. And so uh, they're just not good for you at all. But this one is really good, got a lot of good ingredients in it. So you just have to look at labels and see what you can find there. Um, this is a uh, Italian avocado, avocado oil uh, from Primal Kitchen. Really good uh, company that has a great salad dressing here. So again, the, the, uh, a lot of people are eating salads then they drowned it in ranch dressing or something like that. You just ruined whatever else you put in there because of the soybean oils and all the bad oils and things. So really important to look through that. Um, again, avocado oil is good as long as it hasn't been processed. You have to watch the processing. That's just as important as uh, the other things that, that we do when we eat. Um, mustards, almost all mustards are, are good. You have to look through them though. It should be just a real simple ingredients. Uh, let's see if I can find it. This one is just water, organic vinegar, and organic mustard seed, and salt, organic turmeric. So, you know, really good stuff here. Um, so, just kind of look for mustards, are usually all good. Uh, this is a mayonnaise, again, from Primal Kitchen with avocado oil. So, you know, the mayonnaise is, you know, they have to look, look at the labels because if they have the bad oils in there, uh, all kind of, you know, they'll put a lot of times put sugar. Uh, we talk about that with our three tastes handout. The body has a taste for sugar, salt, and fats, and manufacturers will use that to make a product that, that you think is really tasty. If you don't look at the label, you know, you're poisoning yourself with your teeth kind of thing. So really look at the labels. The Primal Kitchen is a really good brand there. Uh, a lot of recipes, we use uh, heavy whipping cream or organic uh, Valley organic heavy whipping cream uh, for that. Uh, because it's, it's uh, well, it's actually good and it, it tastes good and it helps to make the thing creamy and we use that in place of other things. Uh, so we have that one. Then uh, peanut butter is another thing that's uh, good as long as you get along with peanuts. And I don't, I don't do very well with peanuts, so I don't eat a lot of peanut butter. But uh, there's some, this one is Old Home, which is 100% all natural, you know, peanut butter. It's just peanut butter. So like Jif and those things will have a lot of sugar in those. So again, if you're sending your kids to school, you know, with the sugar, well, you know, we talked about this in the earlier things, the sugar, blood sugar goes way up, body in, puts a lot of insulin out to stop it, goes way down, so when they're high on the sugar, they're all jittery and can't sit down, and they, they, the blood sugar crashes on the kids, well, then they're depressed, and they don't want to do anything, and they're grumpy, and that kind of stuff. So it's just really important to know what's in foods, and also how they're processed. Um, and then uh, you can get meat sticks, uh, this one is from Iowa Smokehouse. You know, you have to watch some of them. A lot of them have a lot of sugars and things. This one is pretty good. Uh, so you have to just look at them and uh, try them out and see, you know, what which ones work good for you. But they're they're available. And of course, the protein in here is going to be good. They're tasty. They're easy to grab. Uh, you know, uh, they're really a, a good food uh, and a simple snack. Because a lot of people were getting uh, questions from parents having problems knowing what to take for the kids to take for to school lunches, because everybody knows the school lunches are based on the food pyramid. 
and the food pyramid is way high on grains. It's supported by Kellogg's and a lot of these big food people. So the food pyramid is really not a very good way to eat. It's the sta stand standard American diet, the sad diet, uh, so that you know you just you're uh, you know, you got to look into it. There's a lot of good places to do that. Uh, Ivor Cummins has a great uh, YouTube channel with a lot of good information about that. Um, uh, what's her name? <laughs> Tai Schultz. Yeah, Ty Schultz. Uh, Nina Ty Schultz has really uh, information into the food pyramid business. Uh, Dr. Gary Fetke. Uh, there's a whole bunch. So once you can get into one, you'll find the other guys, and you can get a lot of good information there. Um, now, some of the uh, recipes here, uh, we, we have quite a few things. This one is called a, a quick crunchy cereal. So it's a half a cup of crushed nuts, uh, walnuts, pecans, almonds, half a, cu a quarter cup unsweetened coconut flakes, a handful of fresh berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, and one third cup of almond milk. You know, so that, that's a, a lot better for you than a bowl of frosted flakes. I mean, frosted flakes are going to make that blood sugar curve go really high. And again, the kids are going to be jumping off the walls, and then they're going to crash by 10 o'clock and be tired and grumpy and won't be able to learn anything or absorb anything. So it's really important. Uh, we try to get people to do just a protein in the morning. If they kid get the kids to have a hard-boiled egg, you know, if they get along with dairy, you know, some kind of hard cheese. We try to keep people away from uh, soft dairy, uh, milk and yogurts and that kind of stuff, because it just doesn't digest well. It's got a lot of preservatives and stuff in it. It's just not good for you. Um, uh, eggs and sausage balls. You know, you have you can always come by our office here, 3000 Jefferson, pick these up. Also, if you have any questions, uh, put those in the comments. We can kind of pick those up as we go, or we'll answer them later. Uh, so a lot of good uh, recipes here. As a little bit of a uh, pre pre December uh, uh, notice, we're going to have our make up our own uh, cookbook for Christmas this year. And so again, uh, my wife and then uh, the uh, girls here have taken a lot of these recipes we've got online, like for keto and different things. And most, most, a lot of them are good all by themselves. This is a really good bacon wrapped chicken tenders. Uh, so, you, so a lot of them are good, but some of them, when you, you make them, they just don't taste as well. And there's ways we know to tweak those things to make them taste better. Because uh, uh, you know, people a lot of times, if they bite into something like this is a chocolate mousse, and we had that to try today. It, it wasn't quite right, um, but uh, we kind of made the ingredients a little different. And so by adding a little salt, and we took off some of the avocado in here, and then we added a little stevia, um, that uh, it, it really made it, it's gonna make it taste a lot better. It tastes more like chocolate mousse, because a lot of people, if you say, what's well, a chocolate mousse, and they're used to the chocolate mousse they get at the restaurant, they bite into something that doesn't taste at all like it, well, then they're not gonna uh, stay with it very well. So uh, this is some good information there, breakfast, snacks, lunch. We have some menus here uh, that you, you can have, too, and uh, even a whole menu layout here. So a lot of good information there. Also, we have a lot of books available that um, are book names available that you can get and get your own recipes, like the uh, Protein Power. Uh, Dr. Eads wrote that book, a uh, really good book, and they have their own recipe book that goes along with that. Um, the GAPS, uh, 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 Gastroenterological Syndrome book uh, from uh, Dr. Natasha Campbell, uh, also has its own recipe book. A lot of recipes, other things you can get into that you can make foods that are really good for you and for the kids and you can have good snack snack items there. So again, if you have any questions, always can, uh, give us a call. And again, you always can come to these too. Uh, I mean, the, we're open at six o'clock here to have people come and visit. So we'll kind of promote that more as we get past all this uh, social distancing uh, stuff. So again, I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit. Now I'm gonna go to Dr. Chip. He's gonna give you some good information about Good stuff. <laughs> All right, so um, we're kind of talking about more of the foods here, but um, kind of practically how I look at it is that it's not really about what stresses us, it's about how we're able to adapt to that stress, kind of more of the adaptability. So with nutrition, again, if we're not eating the right foods, if we're eating too many uh, grains, you'd say sugars, sweets, candies, sodas, anything like that, and we're doing it in excess, then we're, we're putting our body at a vulnerable state to where it's not going to be able to adapt to certain other things. 
And so when we weaken the body in that state, then again, we can be affected by other illness, such as you know, viruses or bacteria or um, different traumas or anything like that. But then also, there's a, a physical component. So if you, again, if you're, if you're not moving, if you're not working out or not exercising at all, you're not doing anything, you're kind of sitting around too much, again, you're not getting the, the right uh, flow of blood, the flow of nutrients in the body, then you're still not going to be able to adapt very well. But there is another other stream there too, is where if you're if you're doing too much exercise, if you're going too hard without replenishing yourself, then your adaptability falls down again. So it's always wanting to make sure that we're kind of at that right that right balance of things to where we're able to adapt to that stress. And again, we're going to have stress. It's it's a it's a known thing. It's inevitable. We're always going to have stress. And even uh, with that too, is the nutrition, the physical. But then the, the thoughts part. So if, we're, if we think that all stress is bad, that's even badly, um, that even puts a more of a damper on that adaptability. So again, there is good stress out there and that uh, we can actually help our bodies to become stronger for it. That if we're um, kind of uh, putting up with that stress a little bit, uh, but knowing that it's not a, really a bad thing, it's, it makes us actually uh, better to adapt to more stress then we can actually help ourselves. And uh, with the thoughts there, um, we have a lot of negative thoughts uh, kind of in today's world with uh, kind of the fear of everything going on. Uh, and that really puts a very, or puts our bodies at more of a, that's not very uh, adaptable to the different things. And so if, we're, if we really look at ourselves as weaker or we, we don't know how much fear can really uh, damage our cells or our bodies uh, and again fear and uh, different negative emotions it, it puts off the same physiological processes of the body to where our adaptability comes down so if we're not really taking the time to balance out our, our thoughts or we're not taking the time to eat proper foods or we're not moving properly not getting enough sunlight again that adaptability goes down so we're always making sure to have that uh, kind of process or the um, everything going well to where we're balancing out much more to where now we can actually feel like we're able to adapt to that stress and we're, we're stronger for it, we're healthier for it, and then we can kind of live our lives a lot better for it. Uh, so I think that's all I kind of had. I uh, hope you kind of learned there. I'm going to go ahead and give it to Eddie and he'll talk more. We have uh, Alta says hi to everyone. Hi, Alta. <laughs> I mean, one thing I was going to kind of talk about is really kind of decluttering the mind. Um, when it comes kind of the nutritional sense, we've always kind of had those um, times in our lives, maybe when we were younger, when we had those sweets. And when we had those sweets, you're kind of you're kind of making more of a connection within the brain, but also kind of a mental note inside your subconscious mind saying, if I had these sweets, I'd get more of this urge kind of sense. And every single time we had that same sweet, we kind of make ourselves a habit of getting into this sweets of things. So really, I kind of look at more of kind of decluttering the mind, if you want to look at a nutritional or a health aspect of things, is finding out, yes, these sugars are kind of, uh, I guess, kind of using against the, yourself and your body, but it's making it very, very addictive in a sense. But we can find ourselves maybe finding out these really actually good recipes in Primal Kitchen. Um, you can't really taste the difference. The ketchup's the same, the mustard's really just the same. All of essentially is the same exact things you can find in any other uh, food, but it's healthy in a sense. So now we're kind of getting away from that actual addictive nature of sugar, and we can find ourselves decluttering the mind in a sense of getting more of a healthy lifestyle and standpoint. So for instance, like if we had the same uh, behaviors and habits as we were kids back in the day, and we kindly consistently get ourselves in that same nutritional habit, but we kind of switch it for a little bit and go more of emotional habit. So if we kind of go from our kid standpoint and we started fearing when we were a little kid and we've had this clutter in our mind that we fear more and more and more, well, the fear will always be there, but maybe the actual image itself could be different. So for instance, the fear of me or going into class when I was a kid, there was fear, maybe from speaking out loud or you know being shy or anything like that. Well, switch it today to today's world. You know, my last job, there was still fear inside of me from speaking up to other doctors and trying to help them out with giving them nutrition. So essentially the same emotions there, 
but with decluttering the mind and looking more of the positive emotions side of things, what Dr. Chip was getting at, and kind of going piggyback off that with the adaptability of things. So if we find ourselves getting away from those negative emotions like fear, that our subconscious mind conditions inside, and we switch that to more of an emotional side or a positive emotion side of you know, fear or love in that sense of things, or more of kind of courage to kind of break out of that, that uh, comfortability that's actually inside of the mind. So we can declutter in a sense by using the positive emotions to get away from those negative emotions that are causing much, much stress in your life. So that's a little bit that I have more on the emotional side of the thing, but back to Dr. Mark with uh, COVID. Great. So just a couple of wrap up points. I mean, Dr. Chip was talking about like, so what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, basically. Uh, that kind of thing. If you can live through it, you're going to be stronger. So you want to live through it. And then, uh, uh, so uh, what, what I think you were talking about uh, there too, you know, just uh, keeping that, keeping yourself from being reactionary. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't react emotionally. Uh, try to think about being logical. Uh, so that's why I'm going to present the COVID stuff mm -hmm. here because COVID, the COVID business has got to be so emotional. People are so emotionally wrapped up into it uh, that it's really causing a lot of problems. So this, uh, this is a, a, a graph that I picked off uh, the internet. It's all you in the 99.99% group. This is the chance of surviving COVID by age and sex. So uh, most all of these, uh, I mean, if, if you have no underlying morbidity or conditions, your, your chance of surviving are way up at 98.9087 in women, above 80, and 96.3318 above uh, 80 for males. But if you have one or greater underlying condition, those numbers go down. And so the idea in our office here is to get people to understand it. There's things you can do to get rid of the underlying conditions because, you know, if everybody had underlying conditions, you wouldn't have these, this group. So there's people out there that are 80 or above that don't have underlying health conditions. And it's because the medical doctors say it's genetic. Genetic, genetics or your genes are just a blueprint. Uh, you can control that by helping your body with your daily, uh, you know, uh, uh, diet and you know, getting adjusted, keep your nervous system working correctly, controlling your emotions, you know, uh, keeping a positive outlook, and you can control what genes are are turned on or turned off. So that was a fun little uh, graph that I got a hold of. Uh, this one uh, from the Centers for Evidence-Based Medicine. Uh, says, I ask, are you infectious if you have a positive PCR test result from COVID-19? Uh, from COVID And so uh, there's a real nice graph here uh, that uh, shows that uh, even in the non-infectious RNA is going to be there even if you've passed the infectious time. And the PCR test looks at the nucleotide uh, blueprint of the RNA. And not only of just the coronavirus, uh, not just the SARS or the COVID-19 virus, but many coronaviruses. So the, this testing is very non-exacting, um, and then the, the RNA hangs in there for a long time. So we're seeing a lot of these tests go, you know, positive tests, but everybody should eventually test positive. We want to have herd immunity. It's a good thing that these tests are going up. And again, the, the, more bat, the morbidity has just dropped out the bottom, but the testing and the tests are going up. So that's an important uh, part to look at. Um, this is one uh, that I picked off from Dr. Blaylock, face masks pose serious risks to the healthy. So it, he goes into a lot of explanation here, Dr. Uh, Blaylock. Um, this is written by Dr. Or by Patrick Wood. Uh, you can always put his name in the search engines there and find it. Uh, but uh, he has it all uh, very well referenced in the back here. And again, these were all uh, uh, studies done before COVID and basically from surgeons. And the surgeons that had to wear face masks or masks all the time and how that affected their health. Uh, so uh, some problems there. I also saw a nice little video this morning talking about that the possibility of face masks causing the second wave because people that are wearing face masks all the time are breathing in all the things you're supposed to exhale, all the gases, the CO2, you're breathing that back in all day. Most of, a lot of people that I talk to get headaches. I get a headache if I wear one very long, and just you know you feel rotten. So again, uh, we have to keep that in mind. Uh, now the CDC has changed some of the rules. I just saw that just about 15 minutes ago, trying to change the rules on that. People that don't have 
uh, any any signs of COVID uh, may not need to wear a face mask. That's probably going to change. Uh, I found out that Dr. Fauci has had uh, uh, a polyp removed from his vocal cords. He can't talk for a month. You know, but God works in mysterious ways. So then the uh, some other guys are starting to bring out more um, uh, honest information from the CDC. Um, and so this is the, this is hot off the of presses. This was just released yesterday from the CDC. And um, if you go to, uh, this is called the weekly updates by select demographic and geographic characteristics. And I printed it off because it wouldn't surprise me if it's gone in about two days, uh, the way this is being worked out. But on the CDC's website right now, and I'm going to read here on the second page, it says, uh, table view shows the types of health conditions and contributing causes mentioned in conjunction with deaths involving Corona disease, uh, COVID-19. COVID for 6% of the deaths, this is 6%, COVID-19 was the only cause mentioned. So uh, we're getting numbers now of about 170,000, maybe 180,000 deaths by uh, COVID. That's what the diagnosis or has on the uh, death certificate, but only 6% of that is COVID only. Where, if you go into, uh, for deaths with conditions or causes in addition to COVID-19, on average, there were 2.6 additional conditions or causes per death. So 2.6 other comorbidities involved. People were going to die of heart attacks anyway, but they went ahead and put it on there, COVID-19. So only 6% of this 170,000 number is strictly covid uh, related and that brings our numbers down to 10,200 for this country. So what numbers are we supposed to believe? Uh, and again, this is the CDC. This is not me making this up or any chiropractic association or anybody else. This is the government, and it's on their website. So you can look that up. So that's you know, it, and let's think, let's look at it in a positive note. This is good news. Uh, this means that it's not near as lethal, lethal as it was projected or as people thought. We can start to let go of the fear, uh, because again, uh, I, I watched that video this morning on the on the face mask, and the second part of that face mask being a problem is that when you put that on, you're accepting the fear that when you go out, you have to be afraid of the virus, of an of a, a invisible particle, and that that so when you put that on, you're automatically your your fear goes up, your cortisol goes up. When that happens, that's your fight or flight. Uh, hormone, then you, it suppresses your immune system. So uh, want to keep that in mind uh, that uh, I, I've been uh, looking at the face mask as being compliance, not science. So uh, when you put it on, yeah, you have to have it to go to some place or another, but you're just putting it on because, you know, it makes them all happy. So, you know, it's not, it's not a fear thing. It's just a compliance thing that you can go get what you want. <laughs> So that's how I look at it. So anyway, that's probably enough of that tonight. I hope you got some uh, good information from this tonight. Um, again, if you have any questions, always give us a call. We do have free consultations. If you wonder what we do here at Natural Health, Dr. Chip does a, a, more of the chiropractic stuff. I'm working on more of the nutritional stuff. Master Eddie's all into the energy work here, uh, helping people to have you know lots of energy uh, from whatever you know whatever reason, whatever cause. So we're happy to help. Again, we're you're listening to this on Facebook and Instagram. I will have this posted on YouTube and Brideon.com. Uh, the Natural Health Quincy IL is our call sign for Facebook, Instagram. Natural Health Quincy is our channels on YouTube and Brideon. Now, I would, I would uh, ask everyone to please check out Brideon.com uh, because a lot of these videos that's being censored on uh, the other platforms are on Brideon. Uh, like, for instance, the high the high wire with Dale Bigtree. Uh, big tree, I think that's right. Uh, is on uh, high, is on Brighton.com now. He has a lot of good information going into a lot of this stuff too. Dale Victory uh, on there, and then uh, of course the Corbett Report. There's a whole bunch of good places to get lots of good information on. You have to kind of look into it and get get the real uh, skinny on this, not the exaggerated, hyped up stuff from the major uh, media outlets. So anyway, that's probably enough. Uh, hope you uh, kind of have a good evening. And um, as always, don't worry, be healthy. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Yes, yes. <laughs>